What's going on? It's me again. Today we will be talking about access control lists in Red Hat Linux. This video is part of Red Hat Linux or Red Hat Enterprise Linux training course. And we will be talking about access control lists. So basically access control list is a way of setting permissions on files and directories. As you can see by the definition, we're saying it's a method to apply extended permissions on users and group. So much like when you apply permissions using the ch mode and ch on commands on users and groups to change the permissions and to change the ownership, we apply also the access control list as another flexible way of controlling the permissions on the Linux system for users and groups. But the key, key difference between the access control list and the and assigning the permissions with the Linux command line tool, such as the, as I said earlier, ch on and ch mode, is uh, with access control list, you can assign permissions, all right, for on files and directories for users who are not members of your group. So suppose you are uh, an administrator on a workstation, all right, and you want to set permissions for users who are members of another group which you don't belong to. So use ACLs. And actually, ACL is a more flexible way of setting the permissions. I prefer it. If you're talking about, uh, let me say, uh, more complicated or more complex file structure on your system, if you are a home user, you are better off with using chown and chmon, the, the traditional way of setting the permissions. But if you are uh, an administrator on where you manage more than one workstation, I prefer the access control list, especially if you have many users and diversified structure of groups. All right, so let's talk about the two types of access control list after, after I've explained the purpose of them. So technically we have access ACLs and we have default ACLs. So access ACLs, they apply on files and directories. So files and directories. So you set the ACL on file or a single directory. But if we want to talk about directories and their subdirectories and files, we use the default ACL. So you can't directly apply default ACLs on files, right? If you want to control the, the permissions and ownership on files, you use the ACL, access control list. If you want to control the permissions and ownership on single directories, single directories, right? You apply the access to ACLs, but if you have one directory which contains subdirectories and files, you can uh, execute the default ACLs to apply the permissions and ownership and all of the subdirectories, all the subdirectories and files will inherit the permissions that you have applied on the parent directory. All right. So if you, if this is, if this is the first time you hear about access control list, you may find it a bit difficult to grasp on the concept so this video is brief idea about ACLs we're gonna also touch on the practical scenario of applying ACLs but I encourage you if this is the first time of uh, of you hearing about ACLs I encourage you after you watch the video to research more on the internet about the ACLs especially if you're applying or if you are studying for the Red Hat Enterprise Linux right okay all right let's talk about the ACL usage how do we use ACLs? So I know how ACL work and I want to use it. So I have two set of commands, get FACL and set FACL. So get FACL is a kind of audit tool. When I use it, I intend to display the current applied ACLs on files and directory. So if I have previously applied uh, permissions and uh, applied ACLs on a directory, and I want to get the list of the current ACLs, I use the get FACL. Now let's talk about set FACL. With set FACL, I set the permissions, I control the permissions, I remove permissions, I modify ACLs. So here I set the access control list, right? With set FACL. An example would be set FACL dash M for modify. And the syntax is like this. So if you want to set for users, you write user and then the username and what you want to give. So here I give the user mic, right, read, write, and execute on, say, a specific directory. If I put group and hr, read, write, I mean I'm assigning write, write permissions on group, which is hr. All right. 
That's an example of setting permissions on user or groups using access control list. And if I want to display these ACLs or these permissions contained ACLs, I will use get of ACL. Okay, let's talk about the mask value then. Mask value is a consideration if you want to work with ACLs. So mask value is an expression of the maximum allowable permissions for a user or a group on file or directory. An example will ex we'll explain that while we touch on the practical aspects in the lab. But for now, if you want to set the mask, you will use set f ACL dash m for modify, m for a mask, and r for the maximum permission. For example, if I set by applying this command, I am telling Linux right that the highest permission on that file or on that directory is read. So no matter what subsequent or what previous ACLs that have been or will be applied on the file or directory, no matter what are the permissions, if I set the maximum allowable permission to be equal to read, this means that this is the maximum allowable permission on the users. That doesn't include the owner of the file. Now, default ACLs. So we talked about access ACLs. Let's talk about the default ones. What's the use case or what's the business case of different LCLs? So if you uh, intend to create a shared directory for group collaboration or project collaboration, you would use default ACL. An example would be, I have one directory called project, all right? And under this project, I have project files and I have another subdirectory, okay? So the best use case, if you want to share this project with other users, okay? Maybe users on your group are not in your group. So you would use default ACLs. How default ACLs are applied on files and directory? So when you apply default ACL on the parent directory, Okay, which is here. Uh, the files under that directory, and this includes the direct files under the parent directory and the files that are under the subdirectories, will inherit the access ACLs applied on the project. Okay, so what are no matter what the access uh, control list applied on the parent directory, they will be drawn uh, not drawn yeah they will be drawn on files as they are inherited now what about subdirectories they will inherit both access plus default all right enough talking let's now jump to the lab and set or use acls in action okay so ls CD desktop. Oh, not that much. All right, so let's retrieve the current access control list set on that directory. So get FACL dash C labs. As you can see, I don't see any list of access control list. I only see the permissions. So here it's saying the user has read write access, the group has read write, and others has or have only read execute. So if you don't see other entries, it means that there are no get there are no access control list on that directory. Let's examine what are the current files or directories under that under labs. LS dash LA ls-la labs okay let me go to root now since i don't own this directory i will need to use the root so ls-la labs so it contains several files as you can see and don't uh, bother with the permissions for now Let's now set some ACLs on the parent directory and see the effect. Let's first set uh, access control list, not default access control list. So let's pretend that this directory is only directed to be shared between specific members. No group collaboration, no public projects. Okay, right. So let's first examine the current users on the system. Cat, etc, pass, wd. So I have here one user only, 
which is my user. So I'm going to exp experience the application of Active Controllers with that user. So set f acl dash m u my username to have all of the permissions on the directory, which is labs. Okay, now get f acl dash c labs. So as you can see here, what do we have? We have an entry for access controllers, which is my user has read, write, execute on labs. All right. As you can see, the mask or the maximum allowable permissions are the same, unless I set different permissions. Now, if I examine the permissions of the files contained in that directory, I would type ls-la-labs. As you can see, the permissions of the sub-files or sub-directories haven't changed, right? Because I'm using now the access control list. Access control list apply on files and directories with no recursive settings. Okay, but on default default ACLs, we have said that it applies as a recursive way or a recursive uh, order. That's why the permissions of the files haven't changed, but only the permissions of the directory have changed. If I ls la or yeah, only LA, as you can see, the labs directory. The, the user or the group root, root has read write access by now. And since I am part of the root group, as you can see, I have read write and access. And the plus sign indicates that there is an access control list on the um, labs. All right, now let's set some mask. Or let's talk about yeah, before, before before deleting the access control list, let's talk about how we can set a maximum allowable permission on that directory and how it can affect the control list or access control list that we have just created. So if we say set f a c l dash m um, say m maximum allowable control maximum allowable permissions are read write. So what are we missing here? Yeah, labs. Now what have to change? Let's examine the changes. ls la. You see here now the group permissions have changed. And since I am part of the root group, my permissions have changed to only read write. Now if I use get f acl dash c labs. Let's examine the permissions. Now as you can see, since I have created a previous access control list that uh, defines read write execute as permissions for my user on the on the right after applying the mask we get an effective entry saying that effective permissions are only read write and the mask is read write so all the groups and others will inherit or will get the maximum permissions assigned to them which is read write for a group and wx for others since we haven't changed the permissions of others that is the that's how the max the uh, Mask value overrides your access control list. Now let's talk about if we want to delete the access control list we have created. I don't know how many times I am uh, spelling access control list, but you just count. <laughs> so get f uh, set f a c l dash x. So dash x. I want to delete the access control list. I define the user, and then I define the directory. Now get f a c l dash c labs. You see now, I have deleted the access controllers. If I want to set the mask to its previous settings, I would use set f a c l dash um, m and read write execute labs. Now re-examine the permissions or the ACLs again. As you can see, the mask have returned or has returned to its previous value, which is read write execute. As, a, as maximum permissions. Okay, now let's treat the labs directory as a directory to be shared between many members of groups. So it's going to be shared project or shared directory. That's why we will use default access control lists. So first, how do we use that? How do we set uh, default access control list on the labs directory. 
So we do set f ACL f f ACL dash m for modify right, but we would add d indicating that we are using default access controls and all of the rest goes the same. So you my username let's uh, assign the same permissions seven for everything and labs as the directory get f acl dash c um, labs okay see here as you can see default entry has appeared indicating that we are using default access controllers on that directory let's examine the permissions here so default user my username has read write and execute okay we got this what about this one group user so the group or the user indicating the owner of the um, directory has read write execute and the group has read write the mask the value we have set before and this is the as you can see the permissions of the group the others group and the owner haven't changed right because we only uh, use the access control list on a user which is my username but other values for owner group and other have not changed now if we examine the permissions of the existing files under this directory we will see that the permissions are applied or are inherited from the parent uh, settings we applied with access controllers which are these so ls la labs let's see here okay touch file file one txt examine the permissions now so as you can see now file one has read write for the group which is inherited from this one from the access control list and since i haven't changed the permissions on the group it stays the same right okay what about if we created a subdirectory? So make directory as project one. So project one is here. And as you can see, the permissions that have been applied are read, write, execute for the group. And since I am part of the group, the permissions have been inherited, right? So as you can see, file one, project one, they have the access control list inherited uh, from the parent directory, which is labs. So that is about the access control list. This video was a very brief video. Of course, we can research more. I advise you to research more if you haven't heard about this. Uh, and especially if you're studying for the exam offered at the next. Okay, then. That was for today. And see you in the next video.